What's up guys, Evil Deer here. So today I want to speak to you about the political ideologies that exist within the Esperanto movement. Now, for those who don't know what Esperanto is, it's a created language, it's about 150 years old and it's designed to be like a politically neutral language for everyone. And it's actually got somewhere between like 100,000 plus to 2 million plus speakers, no one really knows how many, but there's a lot of them out there. So, now before I jump into the ideologies of the movement, because it's not like your standard, let's say, political party where you got left leaning and right leaning, it's it's a completely separate ball game now before I jump into it you need to understand a little bit about the history now I've said it's a created language it's 150 years old and it was created by an individual and his name was Zamenhof and when he created this language he saw around him just a continual world in fighting and he thought that if we all had the same secondary language we could communicate and we could stop punching each other up type of thing or shooting each other whichever you which whatever is your preference so yeah he had this idea this thinking and he created this language and he put this idea ideology into the language itself. So everything within the language was designed around this ideology. It was easy to learn, um, it was politically neutral, um, and it what didn't attach itself to any particular nation, etc, etc. Now, obviously, everyone who first learnt the language was of the same ideological thinking. They all wanted this to be the secondary language of the world. And there's a name for these types of people in the Esperanto movement, and that's Finvenkistoi, and that basically means people for final victory. Now I know that sounds like some type of military march on word to final victory. It's not like that type of thing. It's just they want to try and have this as a secondary language for everyone. It's kind of like um how people promote, you know, well, well promoted uh, digital over analog, you know. It was better designed, so let's use that instead. And now it's the thing. Probably the worst worst reference I could probably make. Good work, Evil Deer. Now, the second group is called the Badal Mistoi. Now, to understand this group, this is a 150-year-old language, so obviously as time's gone along, the thinking within the movement and the people who have joined and the people who have been born into the language movement have changed. So, for instance, if you're born an Esperanto speaker, well, you're not born one, but you're, at birth you're spoken to an Esperanto, and then your dad speak it, speaks it, and your granddad speaks it, and so forth and so forth, obviously it's no longer just some ideological thinking. It's something to do with your family. It's a core part of you. It's who you are. It's like going up to an Irish guy and saying, you know, who are you? And he goes, I'm Irish. This is me. This is my culture, my heritage, everything. It's the same with the Esperanos. It's 150 years old. We've got fourth generation, like, Esperanto families. They exist. So, obviously, this group is now no longer like, well, let's make this secondary language world. No, no, no. This is my cultural heritage. This is who I am. So, all I care about is the cultural side of the language. I love the books, the music, and all that. I don't care if the rest of the world wants to learn this language or not. That's not a concern to me. And, all honesty, I don't need to care about that because you guys are here. So yeah, you've got the Finvenkistoi, they want to promote as a secondary language of the world, and then you've got Badal Mistoi, and they're all in it for just the culture and they honestly don't care about everyone else. Now when I first started learning the language, like everyone else, I'd never heard of these two like concepts or ideologies. But as you get further into the language, you will definitely encounter them. And any Esperanto speaker who's been speaking the language for long enough, they'll tell you which like category they fall more into. Now, it's not just either or. Fin van Kistoy versus Adam Mistoy. Let's battle it out, gladiator style. No, 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 it's not like that. It's people who have like certain thinking, like if you're a Adam Mistoy, you generally hang out the Adam Mistoy online, but yeah, you know, there's crossing and all that type of stuff. But when I started out, I was more Fin van Kistoy. I, I, I really liked the ideology of the language. I thought it was a good idea that everyone have a secondary language. It just seemed logical to me. But as time went along, I saw that it was no longer really needed that I go out and try and promote it to everyone. And I became more of a Raumista as I got further into like the cultural aspect of the language and I kind of just left that side off to for other people to fight for and there's plenty of them out there fighting for it. So yeah, you've got these two different ideologies. They generally, you know, they're not opposing but, but they're not exactly in line with each other. Um, you will see some like mini online battles between Radal Mistoy and Finven Kistoy but in, for the most part they get along quite well and they actually complement each other. For instance, when the Finven Kistoy are they're promoting the language and someone says, 
well, that's great. It's a secondary language, but is there any books, music, videos? In it? Well, they go, go check this guy out. Go check this stuff out. And then the, an old mystery would go, oh, well, you're interested in that culture. Yeah, sure, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. So they actually really complement each other and how they exist. Obviously, you've got, you know, like, I don't know what you want to call it, um, opposing viewpoints where the Adal Mistoy are like, and the Fing Van Kistoy, the Fing Van Kistoy are like, this is not designed to be a cultural language, it's designed to be a tool, and the Adal Mistoy are like, don't tell me what my family, blah, 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 can do and not do with my own language, you just join this at some random point in your life. So yeah, you do have a little bit of battles every now and then, but it is quite separate and also together at the same time. I guess I've just come to the end of my little spiel about what these two ideologies are. Um, I, as I said, I'm personally more of a Rao Misto now, but there is obviously a lot of Finven Kisto out there, and I'd love to hear what you guys are, because I know a lot of you are Esperanto speakers or you're learning the language. You might have not even have heard of this concept before, but I'd love to hear what you guys are. Leave a comment down below. If you're not even a speaker of this language, what do you think? Where do you think you would fall into the spectrum if you were to learn a language? Would you be more of the cultural side or would you be more of like the utility, the tool side of the language? Anyway, just throwing the stuff out there. Um, if you've liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well, the Finn Venkistoy will find you and do bad things. <laughs>